Hi, I'm Lowell Martin and you're watching MCC Today. On today's show, we have Anna Grace Banks, Austin Franklin, Sheila Johnson, and Flora Sumrall. It's going to be a joy. Here at MCC, I've done things I've never thought was possible, never imagined. I've had one-on-one -on -one experiences with my professors. They've all helped. There's so much to do. We have a good sports program. Just a lot of things going on, and they, they care about students here. I honestly wouldn't trade my experience here for the world. I'm not close to being done yet, but I'm definitely on my way. I give all my thanks to Meridian Community College. Meridian Community College, find your wings. Okay, and today we are uh, uh, lucky enough to have two of our students. We have Miss Anna Grace Banks, and we have Mr. Austin Franklin. And uh, y'all are participating in what exactly? You are in the, are, are you all, you're in the choir? Yes, sir. And yes, sir. also in anything else musical related um, I'm here in on the, campus? I'm in the MCC Dimensions. You're in the Dimensions, okay. So you're in the choir and you're in the Dimensions, but you're here to talk about a particular program that's coming up. Um, yes, sir. So for two years now, this will be the second year, um, MCC has revamped its um, annual Christmas festival and we now call it a Christmas festival of nine lessons and carols. Good. And, um, we're going to have different administrative leaders from the campus and they're going to take part in this program and read um, from the nine lessons and carols and then in between the lessons the choir will sing songs that relate to the lessons and then the guitar ensemble will also play some songs that relate to the lessons. We always have, yeah, always throw such a good program. Now it used to be called the Christmas Gala and so you've changed it to this lesson plan. Now when is this program? It is, if I'm not mistaken, December 5th on a Thursday. Uh, it opens around 6.30, but starts at 7. Okay. And is it open to the public? Uh, yes, sir. And it's also free administration. There's no you know, paying in. It's just you know, open okay, to so the public. Anyone can come? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Do they have to call in first for tickets or anything, or can they just show up? It's free yes, of charge. Free of charge. So mm -hmm. just come on in mm -hmm. and, yes, and sit and listen to some wonderful music. About how long does the program last? If I wasn't mistaken, it's about an hour and 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. And also, for the first time this year, we do have a string orchestra playing along with us, which I just, is going to be I, awesome. I really can't wait. I, that is going to be wonderful. Now, you are a sophomore, so you've been here for two years. Yes, sir. Okay. And you're still thinking about where you're going after this, but you do plan to go into secondary education. Yes, sir. Okay. What, do you have a major yet? Uh, no, sir. I'm still on You're decided. a freshman. Yes, sir. This is, is this your first semester here? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Do you like MCC? Oh, I've been enjoying it a lot here. Um, especially since I've been homeschooled and you're kind of getting to the public life. It was kind of different at first, kind of getting up early in the morning. <laughs> Actually going to classes. Okay. Oh, but yeah, like after like the first two days of going to the classes, I just have been enjoying it a lot. I've been learning so much. Okay, and, I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, yes, sir. Good grades? <laughs> well, I'll say about average. <laughs> okay, okay, good grades? Yes, sir. Okay, now how long uh, 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 have you been involved with music and singing? All of your life? If um, actually, in high school, I joined uh, the choir at West Lauderdale under okay. the direction of Miss Hurst my junior year, and I was in it my senior year as well. And that's kind of where it all started. And then I fell in love with singing. Whenever like you sing, it is like a part of your day that you can kind of escape all the stress of your sure. other classes and just actually enjoy your time. So after that, um, I knew that I wanted to sing again. So I auditioned for the choir and dimensions and now here I am. Do you plan to go further with singing? I would like to. Okay. Yes, Any ideas of what you would like to do? Perfect world. What would you like to do? I would like to go to university okay. and be in the choir there, possibly like, you know, another ensemble kind of like the dimensions and just to continue to sing whether it's at my church or just other places. And what about you, Mr. Franklin? Well, let's see. Music all my life. Mm -hmm. I kind of recently started, I would say maybe three years back, uh, ever since with a group called Stage Two. Okay, yes. Um, they do a lot of theater and. Are you involved in theater? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay, okay. And ever since I started that, first year, terrible, you know, 
music I didn't really care for. It. Second year, I enjoyed a lot more. Um, now, this is my first time being in a choir mm -hmm. uh, this semester, and I have been loving it a lot. Have you learned a lot? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a, a, a secondary, edu you plan to go into secondary education, so you plan to be a teacher. Why do you think music is important in education? Do you think music is important in education? Music is extremely important in education. Music teaches you so many different lessons and there's so many different genres of music and there's so many different things you can learn through the lyrics and music. And whenever you go to choir or whatever you're in, it just gives you a chance to escape all the stress of all your other classes. You can enjoy singing and just learning about all the different notes and all the other different things is really good for your brain too. So. Do you think you'll be able to bring music and incorporate it into your classroom? Yes, do you sir. hope to do that? Yes, sir. Okay, now you don't know what you're going to do yet. No, sir. Okay, so do you think even if you're like a corporate businessman that you will be able to incorporate music oh, into, yeah. the, into the meetings? You'll make them sing beforehand? Oh, yeah. Definitely. I'll make them sing. <laughs> Well, the reason I ask that is nowadays, you know, we have so, so much focus on math and science and, and things like that, which is important. Yeah. But sometimes we let other things go, like theater, like music, that actually does help develop you uh, in ways that, you know, you really can't uh, uh, quantify. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just, I think it's so important, you know, to have people who, who have benefited from music and you know to tell their story okay uh, so wherever you go you know you hope to take music with you mm -hmm. and, and you as well now will you please um, uh, tell us again the name of the program and when it will be okay so the program is called a Christmas festival of nine lessons and carols okay and it's December 5th on a Thursday night and it starts at 7 but the doors open at 630 and it's free admission open free to admission public. to everyone mm -hmm. yes sir okay I do hope y'all come back and 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 maybe we can talk about it and we can determine what your uh, 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 a plan will be what your major will be later on in life. Perhaps. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for coming Thank by you. today. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you us. so much, sir. We'll be right back. Meridian Community College Arts and Letters Series is proud to present a Christmas festival of nine lessons and carols. The MCC Music Department would like to welcome you to a night of sacred music and reflection, Thursday, December 5th, for the annual festival, presented by the Concert Choir and Guitar Ensemble. The lessons will be read by members of the faculty and staff, with carols for the audience to sing along. The candlelight processional is a traditional part of this presentation each year. The presentation begins at 7 p.m. in the McCain Theater, and admission is free. And we have Miss Sheila Johnson, who is the program coordinator for the Medical Laboratory Technology. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. You doing well today? I am, yes. Okay. <laughs> now, how long have you been teaching uh, in this program? 13 years. Oh, my goodness. Yes. 13 years. <laughs> now, the program itself is a two year program? Yes. Okay. And what are the prerequisites to get into there the are program? None. We don't have prerequisites. None whatsoever? No, but. There are some stipulations to okay. that. <laughs> what are the, so, what are the stipulations? Okay, the stipulations <laughs> to that are, if you, um, and our, the fact that we have no prerequisites is aimed more at helping those high school students who are really strong in math and science. Okay. So that's one of the, the stipulations. You have to be a really strong math and science student, which means that you need to have taken higher level advanced maybe even some dual credit courses okay, while you're in high school. such as what? Well, our, we have several that um, you can, I guess in a sense, choose from okay. in, because you only need other than um, you have to have chemistry. Okay. But now the chemistry you're going to have to get here on campus. But you can do that while you're in the program. Okay. But the other ones that you have, an, when I say an option, you just have to have one of. Um, we will accept um, general biology one. Okay. We will accept A and P one. Okay. Or if you would rather, you can do general micro. Now okay. these these are things that must be taken beforehand or can be taken they, during no, the program. Anything that you need can be taken within the two years. Our curriculum is set up that way. Okay. But to get in as either a high school student or someone who may have graduated several years ago but not taken any college classes, you really do have to have that strong math and science background while you're in high school. Sure, you so also, you want like college algebra, maybe geometry, trig? If, the, if your school provides that, certainly. Okay. Anything that indicates to us 
that you are math and science oriented because okay. our program is so heavily based on that. Okay. Um, but they also need to have um, a really strong ACT score. Right. And by that we mean um, you have to have an 18 to get in. 18 overall? Yes, okay. a composite 18 to get in. But um, that's if you've got some college work. Okay. If you um, are trying to get in with no college credits, then you need to have about a 25, 26, maybe even a 27 okay. to truly be considered. And that's just because we're a competitive program. How many new students do you accept? We take 15 each August. And to be considered for, to be one of those 15 as someone who has no college credits, you're going to have to be really strong with that ACT and those and really have a good background in really math and science. strong background not, not just one science class. Do you interview class. each of them? Or we do the we don't do one-on-one -on -one interviews we do what we call um, information sessions yes. and those start every April and there are group sessions but it works really well because um, most of the students who come to us have already you know gotten in contact with us we've given them some pre-information and then we can kind of talk to them even in a group setting and let them know um, if you've taken this if you've taken mm -hmm. this or if you haven't taken this here's where you'll need to be okay. once you get into the program and it even not being one-on-one -on -one, it still works really well because most students who are coming to us all have the same type questions okay. like i've had a and p1 what else do i need to take well actually you're okay. okay you don't have to take anything else well now we strongly would encourage you to take general micro just because I have in my program, I teach two pathogenic micro classes. Right. So obviously a, a micro class before that is going to help you. Sure. Not required, but lots of our students do choose to take that just because they know it'll be helpful. Now once they complete this, they will get an, AA, an AAS degree. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, are, is there like a state test that they have to it's take? It's not a state test. Um, Mississippi doesn't have state licensure. Okay. Um, we have a national test that okay. they take. And once they take this national test and pass it, then they can they can uh, uh, work any of the states. Well, there are some. There's only a handful of okay. states that have licensure. Okay. So they can work in those states, but they would have to pass the licensure also. Okay. But those states that do not have licensure, they are free to work anywhere. Okay. So yes, it now covers once, them everywhere. Once they've uh, uh, completed this program, what types of jobs? might they get? Um, most of our students work or choose to work in um, a hospital lab setting. Um, some of them recently have chosen to go into the clinical lab setting. What we mean by that is like a doctor's office, so okay. a smaller type setting. Okay. Um, but they've chosen that because of the hours. Like they may have young children or something, and so those hours work better for them because there's no weekends, no holidays. Whereas with your hospitals, you've got to work weekends, you're gonna to have to work sure. holiday, sure. those types of things. Do you have many students who choose to go on Most with their education? The majority of ours, they may not do it immediately. They, a lot of them, um, it appears to me, like to get like a year's worth of experience in the field sure. and then they move on and there are so many online programs that they can do that with okay um including um usm in hattiesburg and university med center in jackson so mm -hmm. and there's out-of-state ones too mm -hmm. um but of course you know some of those out-of-state ones could typically be more expensive although i must admit that um, there have been quite a few programs that have contacted us from out of state saying that they are starting to waive the out of state fees. Really? So that makes it more competitive for these in-state. So I hope that they're paying attention. I hope so as well. <laughs> I, you know. So if, we ha if, if there's a person out there in, in our audience who's interested in your program, how can they get in touch uh, with us to get the information they well, need. Well, the, probably, in all honesty, just so they don't have to remember a lot of numbers, sure. the easiest way is just look on the Meridian Community College website okay. and don't even log in. Like, if you're able to log in, you don't even have just to do that. You, you go to the home page of the website and then you're going to go under um, academic. The, there's a drop down box that says academic and um, you're going to pull up programs of study and they're all listed there. Okay. Like it, not even just the health, okay. all the programs are listed there. And you can go through and pick the ones that you would like. And it gives you instructor names, contact information, 
and you're not trying to remember a whole bunch of email addresses and numbers. Is the job market pretty good? Oh, it's exceptional. For, like so. we had, we graduated ten in August. They all ten had jobs. Nine of them had jobs before they walked across the stage. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. And then one, she got the her, she got a job two weeks later. She was waiting to pass boards mm -hmm. because that particular facility required that of her. Mm -hmm. But she she knew that if she passed, she had a job. But she had she kind of had to wait. But she still got a job. So. Okay. It's well, really good. good. Yes, hundred percent for the past. I guess at least the past ten years. So a hundred percent. Once I get the once I finish your program, a hundred percent of the hundred percent of the students let me, who pass let me, I tell get them, jobs. I'll tell you like I tell them. Okay. A hundred percent of you who want to work can work. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> well, listen, I appreciate you being on the show Thank today, you very much. and I do hope you come back and see us I again. Will. Okay. I'll come back next semester. Okay, we're good with that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are very welcome. We'll be right back. Here at MCC, I've done things I've never thought was possible, never imagined. I've had one-on-one -on -one experiences with my professors. They've all helped. There's so much to do. We have a good sports program. Just a lot of things going on, and they, they care about students here. I honestly wouldn't trade my experience here for the world. I'm not close to being done yet, but I'm definitely on my way. I give all my thanks to Meridian Community College. Meridian Community College. Find your wings. And we are back and we have Miss Flora Sumrall, one of my favorite people in the known universe. Great. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing well. Now you are the, uh, uh, I don't want to say supervisor, you are a head of the Business Office Technology Program, right? Program pardon me. Co program so, coordinator. Par pardon me. You are the program coordinator right. for the Business and Office Technology Program. Okay. And how long Bus have we been doing that? Business office management. We're under the business office technology umbrella. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Business office management. Right. All right. And how long have we been doing this? Uh, I've been program coordinator about two semesters. Okay. But I've been teaching in the program 12 years. Okay. And, uh, and, and as I said, you're one of my favorite people in the world because yeah. I was actually your teacher many yes. moons ago. And I taught comp one, right? Right. And uh, so, just uh, we'll get we'll get back to that in a little okay. bit. But first, we want to talk about the the program, the okay. business office management. Now, what kind of stuff do y'all do in the program? Well, we actually teach students. It's a two year program. Okay. Uh, but we also have two certificates. We have a two semester uh, two semester certificate and a three semester certificate. Okay. But we actually prepare students. Well, it's with the, they are the students who are looking for. Uh, immediate jobs after graduation and so we prepare them technology wise uh, for the skills that they'll need in this really great technology world now okay and so we try to prepare them through um, when you're going into this degree we take them back through you know the office suites we take them through all the words so they're learning uh, how to do Excel spreadsheets yes. they're learning how to you know all the ifs and, and the ins and outs of uh, okay. Of We're doing all that of word. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Right, because it's amazing how many people are, you know that come in and they say, well, I can type a letter. Sure. But you can type a letter, but can you type a letter correctly? There you go. Uh, can you do all this other stuff that's properly that the way it's supposed to be done? It's amazing. Even uh, to banking, we teach mm -hmm. banking. Mm -hmm. uh, we teach. Uh, we're getting ready. Exciting. We're getting ready to um, get an accounting technology degree oh under this umbrella as well. Okay. Yeah. Now will that add to the number of semesters that the students will have? You said you've got a, a two semester certificate and a three semester certificate. If when you have the accounting under that umbrella, will it add more? This uh, would be another program. Oh, a completely it, different a program. Different, so they're not in right. the okay, got you, right. got you, got you. Okay. So under the business office technology, we have business office management technology, which is me. Okay. We have medical office management technology, which is my coworker, Tanya Ocampo. Right. And now we should have accounting technology under there as well. Oh my. Oh, okay. excited. Now, what are the prerequisites to get into your program? We don't have prereqs. At all. At all. Okay, so but you know that some take uh, some come in. They have they have already taken uh, the acu. They have to take the acu place. Okay, mm -hmm. they have to have graduated from high school. Uh, yes, and we actually have some students who come in who have not graduated high school, but they have gone through the um, adult basic adult education. Basic, right. So they they okay. they don't technically have their high school equivalency, but they're also in your program. Right, as long okay. as they have that GED. They have to have the GED, they have so to they have, have the, to have the high school equivalency. High school they have, they to, have to have that. either the, the gradu graduate from high school okay. or they have to have the GED. Do they have to have taken the uh, uh, ACT? No. 
Okay, they Some don't. Some don't, but they have to take the AccuPlacer down. And what do they have to score on the AccuPlacer? Do we We're in the process of changing that from, you okay. know, so that's in the works right now. We have okay. something, but I won't quote that one. Okay, okay, because right, it's because not accurate. It's not accurate. Okay, so typically speaking, how many new students do you take every year? And it actually de it depends. This last, uh, this semester, we had so many students come in. Uh, we ended up with like about 30-something new students came in. Wow. And, you know, we're, we offer like a word, yes. which is the first semester classes, instead of one uh, session of it, we had to open up two sessions. So we put it online and in the classroom. Okay. Right. Okay. So we had quite a few new students this time. Now, when they complete your program, uh, can they go on to a four-year university if they want to, or can they continue their education? Do many do that? Many do. I, you know, I graduated from this program, I, I uh, the medical office technology part of it, and I did. I decided that I wanted to do more, so I actually went to I won't call the university's name, but I went to university, and uh, some universities take more of our classes than others. Okay. And I did, and I got, uh, I had my associates, I got my bachelor's, and I started working on my uh, master's. Okay. Right. Okay. So yes, they can. Now, when they complete your program, what kind of jobs are they looking at? What um, kind of job opportunities? It, it's a lot have? out there, and I actually put some down. Okay. Uh, we have admin natural administrative assistant. Okay. We have uh, administrative support, business office manager, clerical assistant. Um, we have uh, students who've gone on to be human resource um, people, executive secretary. Uh, some of my students have gone on to be teacher's assistants. Okay. So it's a lot of different things out there that this technology prepares you for. Okay. And it's a two-year program. It's a two-year program, but like I say, you, might, you can get a certificate at two semesters. Uh, you can get another one, 45 hour at uh, three semesters, but we encourage everyone to go the four semesters and get the AAS degree. Okay, and it's an AAS degree in uh, business. In, in uh, we have medical office management technology, business office management technology. Okay, it sounds like it's a, just a, a growing area. It, it is, and and, and people you know Especially try to put if you bring a, the accounting. Into some it. people try to put a label on and say, "Oh, you're going to be a receptionist." It's so much more you can do with this. I'm not a receptionist. Mm -hmm. It's so much more, and there's nothing wrong with being a receptionist. No, not at a all. A business need one. I like to call us support. Okay. Because when you, any office, any business you go into, they have support. You're not going to see the executive or the CEO getting the paperwork out, getting those. Sure. So uh, we're support. Well, for anyone interested in, in, in your program, how can they get more information or find out more about it? How can they contact? I know they probably wouldn't contact you. Some do. Okay. But how would, uh, how would they con get in touch with uh, uh, the school and ask about this particular okay, program? They, they can go on, on the website. Okay. But, and I, I don't get in trouble for this, but we have an awesome counselor. Uh, yes, Valerie Creel. You did. If they contact her, she has all of the information they need. She'll set them up and get them started. And if need be, she'll put them in touch with me. So uh, that's usually how and, students I'm roll. I'm just going to say, Valerie does, um, and she's going to get mad at me, but she does not like to be on camera. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I have does, invited her on the show, and she's like, She mm. does an excellent job. She, does, she really does. She yes. does an excellent job. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk to you uh, is about returning to school a little bit later on in life, which you did. I did. You know? And as I said, you were, because I, I remember you in class, you were just one of the bright spots of, of uh, just, uh, just a wonderful student. And I thoroughly enjoy students who are returning, you know, who've been out there in the world for a while, know what it's like, know what they need to do. We're serious. And, and, and yes, and, and I, love, I love all my students, and, and I right. think you know that. However, let's face it, sometimes the younger ones aren't as, um, um, uh, Dedicated? Dedicated. Yeah, okay. Let's go with that. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> and, but you were, and you came in immediately, and you're like, this is what I want to do. I've got this much time to do it. Let's get this done. Now, let's get started. And, and I always appreciated that very much. And I think, you know, since I, it's, I fed you, I also taught your daughter. I believe I taught a, a niece or a cousin. <laughs> I always say, cousin or, ask for a little more. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm family. But uh, what made you decide to come back to school a little bit later in life? Burlington Industries closed. Okay. My husband and I both worked there, and we had a daughter. My mm -hmm. son had passed. We had a daughter we were raising, and my husband said, well, you know, they were offering us, the government was offering us the opportunity for a two-year degree, and he said, well, I'm not going to school. He said, you go to school and I work. Okay. And so I came in school with, don't play with me. I <laughs> need did, this degree. You did not. I she need came to get in and she's like, I'm doing here. this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Okay. Was it different coming back a little bit later? 
It was, but like you said, I was more dedicated. Sure. I knew what I wanted. I didn't want to beat around the bush. I didn't want to, you know, go home and say, I'm not going to do my work. Oh, no, I'm getting this work done. And I tell my students now, and I, I use that. It helps me a lot. I said, I'm not telling you something that can't be done. Sure. I've done it before. Sure. And my students know, don't tell me I can't do it. Just say I haven't done it before. Mm -hmm. It can be done because when I returned to school, you remember in your class I was sick. Mm -hmm. I had just mm -hmm. recovered from having surgery for a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. And it was it was a hard time. It was, it was rough. But I knew it had to be done. And so... I, I love encouraging my students because I see me in a lot of them. And I, I so enjoy having you as a colleague because you know that. Every time I see you, we joke around and we, we just <laughs> right. have a good time. Uh, I'm so glad that, that, that you are here and that you are, you are uh, adding your expertise and giving it to these people because I really think that you're helping us help them so. a lot. I hope, so. I hope you come back and next time we're going to get maybe Miss Ocampo. She's your, definitely coming with me. She's coming with hands. you and maybe we can hoodwink Mr. Miss Krill in there as well. Let's okay, we'll just grab her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll trick her down here. Thank you. Okay. Well, but I do hope you come back and thank you so yeah, much for coming thank today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks. We'll see you. We'll be back in a minute. Meridian Community College Arts and Letters Series is proud to present a Christmas festival of nine lessons and carols. The MCC Music Department would like to welcome you to a night of sacred music and reflection, Thursday, December 5th, for the annual festival, presented by the Concert Choir and Guitar Ensemble. The lessons will be read by members of the faculty and staff with carols for the audience to sing along. The candlelight processional is a traditional part of this presentation each year. The presentation begins at 7 p.m. in the McCain Theater and admission is free. We'd like to thank Matt Milner, our executive producer, Josh Taylor, the media consultant, and Drew Belvin, the student producer. They did a great job, didn't they? Then me too.